Hello and welcome back to another episode of A Brief History Of, and today we'll be looking at the Kettle War. There have been a lot of odd name conflicts in history, I should know as I've covered a few in my short YouTube career. The Kettle War gained its name from, well, its only casualty and, um, well, a kettle of soup. War is a terrible thing, especially when the innocent are dragged into it. However ridiculous this sounds, the Kettle actually played its part to shape modern Europe, and I'm not talking about the tragedy of an Austrian sailor losing his dinner. In the late 1700s, the Netherlands was two separate states. The Northern Netherlands, called the Dutch Republic, were an independent sovereign nation, whereas the Southern Netherlands were ruled by the Holy Roman Empire. No, not that Roman Empire. Due to the closing of the River Schleck by the Dutch Republic after the Dutch Revolt in 1585, the cities of Antwerp and Ghent found themselves isolated from trade ships. This isolation of the South made the Dutch Republic's economy boom, making Amsterdam a major trading hub in Europe. In 1784, Joseph II, the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire, demanded that the Dutch Republic return some of its provinces to imperial rule, as well as the reopening of the Schleck to allow trade ships to travel to Antwerp and Ghent. Joseph II was pretty confident in his demands, as surely the Dutch Republic couldn't stand up to the might of the Holy Roman Empire. As a side note, Joseph is an interesting character as he tried to institute reusable coffins, as well as allegedly having his army defeated by um, his own army at the Battle of Karen Sebes in 1788. Joseph sent three ships to the Schlecht, led by a relatively powerful merchant ship, Le Louis. The Dutch, in the face of the overwhelming might of the Holy Roman Empire, sent out a massive fleet of not two, not three, but one ship to meet them named the Dolphin. Surely this was a given that Joseph's fleet would easily defeat just one measly ship. Without notice, on the 9th of October, the Dolphin fired out one well-aimed shot at Le Louis, fatally wounding a kettle of soup on board. This immediately terrified the Austrians and they quickly surrendered to the Dutch. What is crazy is that on paper, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, the Dolphin would have been outgunned severely by Le Louis. That's not counting that there were also another two more ships that the Dolphin would have had to have faced off against as well. Unsurprisingly, Joseph wasn't too pleased to find out about the defeat and officially declared war on the Dutch Republic on the 30th of October and began to invade Dutch territory occupying Fort Lillo. The Republic raised an army to defend its borders but before any large protracted war could break out, many European nations put pressure on Joseph to stop his invasion of the Republic. The skirmish led to the Treaty of Fountain Bu under the mediation of France. Although the Schlecht wasn't ordered to be reopened in the treaty, the Dutch Republic did have to pay compensation to the Southern Netherlands of a sum of 2 million guilder, although the actual amount could have been as high as 10 million. Several fortifications were also dismantled by the Dutch Republic. The Northern Netherlands remained independent, however increasing fierce competition from England and France in trade and colonies pushed the Republic off the world stage as a military power. The Kettle War was one of the many straws that eventually broke the camel's back, and the old Dutch Republic eventually toppled with the intervention of French revolutionary forces in 1795 leading the way to the Batavian Republic and eventually being incorporated into the French Empire in 1810. This farcical conflict shows that nothing is given in war and that possibly the Austrian Navy weren't prepared to fight without a warm, liquidy filling dinner. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. And if that's the case, please click subscribe, like and comment. And also, if you could, it would be absolutely amazing if you could share videos on any type of social media. And also, you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at plainly underscore D. Once again, thank you very much for watching.